Yes, Chad. Yes. Where you can openly buy a black slave. Yeah. And you have We're people defending this. Today, yeah? And and the thing today, is, yeah. the the charlatans, oh, the charlatans that call themselves the Dawagandists, yeah. right? For years, they've they've just been using any sales technique, any argument to try and bounce people into Islam. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's true. But a lot of people have fallen for it. Right? They use any methodology, any argument, doesn't matter how inconsistent, doesn't matter how much it backfires on them. And the reason why they do it is because so few people actually bother to look into anything. 100%. You know? Um, you know, it's like um, one thing you were saying that other day where a lot of people are throwing a lot of the hadiths under the bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you mentioned about Sahih. Yeah. And I looked up Sahi and it means like true or reliable. Reliable, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, how can you throw it under the bus when if you throw it under the bus, there's nothing left? Yeah. Now, yeah, now I'm just going to make this very clear. I'm not coming from a Christian point of view. Yeah. Even though I have to say, I agree with so many things he's saying yeah. from the Bible. I have to say that. Um, what, what, what's your where, where are you, where are you coming from, bro? I'm um, just a secular point of view. Okay, fair know? enough. Yep. Um, not that I don't believe in the creator and all of that, but I'm just not really yeah. Sure. We won't get into that for now. Okay. We won't get into that for now. But I've never seen you lose a debate. I'm being honest. I haven't seen. I am. Um, I am flattered. You know. I I've come close once or twice. I felt yeah. that I've come close once or twice. Yeah. But there's been a couple of times when I've been on the ropes. Okay. Uh, and like got us sent, uh, uh, yeah, and got us, and got us sent an angel to yeah. to sort of pull me out the fo uh, off out the corner. What, do you, what are you trying to approve? So, so you, you've just got to, so brother. Just so you know, this guy's a bit of a heckler. No, no, I'm just heckler. Yeah. So, so. Because I just want yeah. to know. So here's what where I'm, this I, yeah. argument with Muslims I, lead you. Where, right. What is it? What brother, is I want to talk to you. He's he's okay. just going to heckle. No, sorry, he's I'm not going to have a conversation. So, no, no, I, I bro, bro, if you don't want to talk to me, no, no, I'm going to go I'll and do talk, other I'll stuff. Talk, so you talk to me. Talk to me. Yeah, I know. I've seen this. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so just talk. Ignore him and talk to me, or I'm going to walk away and do my own thing. You know, the thing is, is that like. Like, even when we're looking at some of the practice, yeah. and I spoke to some people who believe in this thing, and some of them have agreed. Yeah. Some of them, one or two said that the white man put it in there. Right. They put said, what in where, sorry? Um, you know, like in the hadiths. Oh, said, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, <laughs> That's a bit desperate. Yeah, but the response was, whoever's put it in there, yeah. it shouldn't be there. <clears throat> yeah. That's the response, whoever put it there. Whether it's the white man or the Chinese man. But it's actually, it, it was put in there, it was put in there by Imam Bukhari. And, and that was, and he, that, was he a white man? He, or he was a Persian. Persian, okay. So I mean, you could so do you, so you could question whether he's white because Persians tend to be more pale-skinned, but yeah, yeah. Exactly you know he's not a Caucasian. No, no, the Let's put it not this white. way. Persian so so my point white. to you, my point, but but there's a whole bunch of these kinds of hadiths that are embarrassing to Muslims, particularly when it comes to talking about black folk. Yes, so I so one of the most embarrassing is where Muhammad says, you know, you should obey your leader. Even if he is He's an Ethiopian, Ethiopian with, with, a raisin with, a ra with a head like a raisin. Yeah. Now, the reason why he was saying that is because... I was watching that one last night. Yeah, I watched right. Because yeah. he's, he's, he's basically, he, he, Mohammed was speaking in a cultural milieu in which there was a lot of prejudice against black folk. Yes. Right? The Arabs were racist to black people. Still are. And Many st of them. Met, st yeah, it's still black, rampant. They have a slave trade going Still on. rampant through yeah. lots of the Middle East, lots of North yeah, Africa. North Africa. Yeah. They're, they're still selling black slaves today. And, and the, the point is, Mohammed was making an example that you, about obedience, that you should obey your leader, even, even if, if he, he is the lowest of the lowest low. Of the, yeah. yeah. And so, and, and, and the point is, he was, he was playing into this trope um, about 
about black folk, and he uses a racial description. Yes. A head like a raisin is essentially like a, 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 a black guy with a wrinkly face. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, uh, raisin uh, is brown, isn't exactly. Brown, so, yeah. so it's a racial slur that, that Mohammed's using in this discourse. He describes he describes the devil as a rusky yes, looking I've black, seen man, black man, yes, I've right? Seen he sold two black slaves to redeem, for, an, Arab. To yeah. redeem an Arab. Yeah, seen that one. But here's a lot what people don't know, is that immediately on the birth of the Arab Islamic Empire, right, you have examples of uh, prejudice against black folk amongst the early Arab yes, empire. Yes, 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 yes. So Malawian um, converts to Islam had you mean to, Malawi Africa, it, Yeah, Malawi and Africa. They had to sort of fight for their equality within the Islamic yes, world. In parts of Tanzania and yeah. I mean, they succeeded. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It was a Zanzi rebellion? Yeah. Zan but, Zanzi, but, but, but they had to fight because the Arabs came at the, their initial empire as thinking that Arabs were superior yes. to everyone else. And Islam has always led to Arabization. There are countless African cultures, black cultures, that have been destroyed yes. by Sorry. Islamic dominance. And, but yet Muslims talk about European colonialism as if it was the only the kind of colonialism, yeah, it the only right? It wasn't even the first, yeah, it was, it was, it was. you know, Islamic colonialism predates a years by years. over a thousand years, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and, and even today, minorities in the Islamic world, ethnic minorities, yes, yes. have their culture and their identity suppressed. So you've got the Syrians in the Middle East, You've got the Lebanese who were not Arabs, like from, from Mount Maron. You've got the Copts of Egypt. You've got the Nubians of Sudan. You've got the Ethiopians. You've got the, the Somalis. You've got the Malawians. You've got the Chadeans. Like you've got the Berbers in North Africa. Arabization has, has followed Islamic empire around the world. So is that from, would you say that was from like the first caliphs? When beginning of Islam. Yeah, 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 yeah. From from the very from the very birth of Islam and the, from the very birth of the Islamic Empire, there's yes. there's been imperialism and domination. Whereas Christianity, by comparison, when it went to Armenia, it went as the underdog, and then the Armenians adopted it. When it went to Ethiopia, it went as the underdog, and then the Ethiopians adopted it. When it went to Egypt, yes, you have the Ethiopian unit. Yeah. Yeah, it went as the underdog, and then the cops adopted it. When it went to Europe, it went as the underdog, and then the Europeans adopted it. The first time that there, that, that you, you, you do get, you do get um, Christian empires that come later, but these are centuries later after the, the birth of Christianity. Whereas Arab Islamization emerges immediately in the seventh century. Yes. Right. So, oh, well, they, go on. I'm um, sorry to cut you. They had the Turks which um, adopted Islam yeah. and then they pushed it in North Africa and then they pushed it up in Europe. No, no. Well, it was already in North had, Africa. They pushed it primarily yeah, yeah, in Europe. In Europe, yeah. yeah. And then you had, um, so I know like under the Islamic Empire they took black and white slaves. Yeah. But it, it, like the attempt to get slaves was so deep they went as far as Iceland. Yes. Which is extremely cold. Yeah. So that means you must really want to enslave people. Yeah. If you're going all the way to Iceland, because you you know you could just get all the blacks from from Africa. Well, they did millions well, of yeah, them. Millions. Yeah. Millions of them. And and this is the point, right? There there is an un uh, there is a there is a conversation that needs to be had uh, in the black community with regards to slavery, I, I agree. which which recognises. The, which recognises, yeah, which we, no one disputes, that European, yeah, European colonial slavery. slavery was evil and was bad and was unjust, but recognises that Europeans have repented of that. Y yes, they stopped the slavery. We, yeah, we, we, the East African Division of the Royal Navy mm -hmm. used up, at its height, used up 2% of British GDP. The East African Division of the Royal Navy was a division of the Royal Navy whose sole purpose was to suppress the slave trade, to suppress the slave trade, right? We were suppressing the slave trade in Brazil, which was a Catholic country, but we were also suppressing the slave trade in the African nations. Whilst we were suppressing the slave trade, Muslims continue to practice and deal in slaves. Well, yes, Mauritania, I think they still today. 
2007 illegal. Um, you could go to like um, Yemen. Yeah. 30, 40 years ago and yeah. buy, get a black slave. 1962 in Saudi Arabia. That's it. Um, but you can buy black slaves in even like Libya for about two hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, it's it's it's, it's unbelievable. You so, know, so people who say it's not true, yeah, they haven't done any research. Yeah, um, they're just trying to deny the fact. But it's a fact. Yeah, I've spoken to people from like, you know, around the region of Mali to yeah. Gambia, Senegal, and you know, there's there's blacks being snatched. Yeah, from the northern part, you know, like around Mali. Yeah. And Saturday, they've been sold as slaves. Yeah, Janjaweed are still kidnapping Christian blacks in South Sudan when they yeah. do a yes, raid. They are, yes. yeah. The Fulani and Boko Haram, they're kidnapping uh, yeah, black yeah, Christians uh, uh, as sexual slaves. Yes, sexual you know? slaves, yes. um, And so the, the reality is there needs to be a recognition of this amongst the black community. Yeah, there needs to be more discussion. And more discussion around more it. Discussion. You know, uh, and, and also I think a lot of any, co any black convert to Islam, any black convert to Islam to examine this. Who, who, who converted because they were angry about white injustice to black folk from centuries ago. They need to examine themselves whether their conversion is a sound conversion, whether they got duped, whether they got tricked, whether they got hoodwinked into Islam. I'll, I'll be very honest with you, and as I said, I'm not coming from a religious perspective at all. Yeah. With some blacks who convert to this doctrine, it's ulterior motive. Yeah. You know, it's ulterior motives, like they can be involved in business. Yeah. I'd say some good motives as well, you know, yeah. structure, and you know, because they want, they want to work, yes, discipline. They want to have structure. Family. But also things like maybe having multiple wives. I'm not going to get into that topic. Yeah. But the thing is, I think if you're complaining about European slavery, yeah. and then there's another slavery going on right now, it's a bit of hypocrisy, isn't it? Absolutely. Sorry, sorry Absolutely. Absolutely. Just, agree with you. just ignore him. Yeah. yeah. So, so the point is, as the, the, the point is, is in terms of, in terms of, um, in terms of our discourse about slavery, mm -hmm. as well as recognizing the evils of the past, yeah. and recognizing the only civilization that's ever repented of it, right? We need to be doing more to tackle slavery in the Islamic world today. Yes. Right? Yes, I agree. And Christian missionaries are doing that. Yeah, yes, they're buying the black slaves to yeah. free them. Now, I think, I think that they, that... They had them in little bags. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. But I think that's problematic. I mean, it's necessary but it's problematic. It's necessary because someone's got to do something, but it's problematic because it does feed the continuation of a slave trade. Okay. And could, what? It, could it be an issue because it may conflict with someone's religious belief? Could that be an issue? For me, no. I, I don't well, not mind. Not for you, but yeah. for the ones who's... In... I, I, I have no problem with my religion being the inspiration behind the suppression no, of the slave sense, trade. but on the other side, because, for example, well, Muslims yeah. believe in selling slaves, so they've got no problem if someone comes up to them with a dollar per cash and goes, hey, I'll buy your slave for all you. Once they've sold that slave, they don't care, they've got the money. And then the Christians set them free. And, and there's hadiths you have of this? And yeah, what, buying and selling slaves? Yeah, Muhammad gave a slave to his daughter Fatima as a gift. Yes, I did read that, yeah. You know, um, like, like that, that itself is, is problematic. But the point is, I think what we need to be doing is advocating that the Western world punishes societies that don't tackle the slave trade. Yes, didn't didn't they? Um, we should milit. Was it Morocco or one of these countries in yeah, submission? Yeah. Yeah. So so the Barbary pirates, yes. were, which were based out of North Africa, the French, the British, and principally the Americans, stopped their slave trade by force. Yes, I am I completely in agreement with the idea of using force against the Janjaweed, against the Fulani, against Boko Haram, against ISIS, or against any, or Hamas who have taken sex slaves from Israel. We should use force to stop Islamist militants from the continuation of the practice of the slave trade. Right? And we should not be embarrassed by that because our cause is just. And, 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 and that is the only way you stop Islamic societies. There's no internal reform possible.
Um, yeah, it, it's interesting because I've been also studying MBS, you know, yeah. Mohammed bin Salman of Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And it seems like he's creating a lot of reforms within yes. Saudi Arabia, but he's moving away from the Sharia yeah. and the harsh Islamic doctrine. So, you know, there may be some stopping of slavery there if they're still carrying it on, I yeah. know. Um, I just think that it's very hard because you have a lot of black people who protect them. Yes, they do. Yep. And I'm saying this as a black person. Yeah, yeah. Because if you say it, they might say you're racist. Well, I get thrown. The term racist gets chucked around yeah. so much nowadays, it's almost meaningless. Like, anyone who says anything, they, it can be accused of being a racist. It, it, and, and, that's, and the thing is, it's white middle class people that have caused the word racist to lose its power. Yes, yes. Them, yes, right, because they've abused it. Yes. Well, white middle class people have hampered the fight against racism because they've abused the word racist against their white middle class political opponents. And so the term racist has actually lost its power. Now, if someone calls me a racist, I don't even fear it because I know I'm not. And I know that the term is understood to be widely abused in culture. Yeah. Now, that shouldn't happen. The ter being accused of being a racist should be a serious thing. A serious thing, yeah. It should be a serious thing. Yeah. But it's lost its power because white middle class people from the left abuse the term to fight against white middle class people from the right. And the, the people that have lost out because of that are black folk. Yeah, yes. You know, I just wanted to touch on something because um, I'm not going to go too deep into it. But you see, if you look at Palestine, there is a group of black Palestinians yeah. that had been taken there as black slaves. Yeah. And we have this talk about Palestine and Israel. Not once have I heard anyone talking about these black Palestinians yeah. who are disregarded by the Arabs in Palestine. So when people are talking about equality, yeah. I don't see where the equality has been for those blacks yeah. in Palestine. Yeah. Everyone pretends as if they don't exist. Yeah. Not everyone, but many. Yeah. You know, so, you know, it's I mean, really good to meet you, though. I'm going to leave you to... Well, no, let, I'm happy to keep oh, talking to you if you like. Yeah, I'll give another you're, five. You're on no time limit, bro. I'm here to talk to people like you. If there's any questions about Christianity, this is a great opportunity to ask. You have my attention. Yeah. Not going to give it to anyone else. I'm here to talk to folks like you, yeah, so yeah, feel yeah. free to ask away. Yeah, so um, what I was going to say is that do you believe that this religion, especially for black people, do you believe that it's a just and a moral religion? Yeah. Do, do you believe Are you talking about Christianity? No, 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 I'm not talking about Christianity. I'm saying on the opposing side where yeah. you still openly have black slaves in the yeah. Muslim, in a Muslim uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, think, obviously not. Just obviously not. And, and the the, 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 the very fact that, that I, as a white man, can still go and buy a black slave, yeah. but the way that I need to do it is to go to the Islamic world, and, yeah. tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. The reality is that, that Christianity has n never been just a European's religion. Christianity was founded in the first century of its faith in Europe, the Middle East and Africa at the same time. Yeah, yeah, there's some history. There. Many of the leading saints that I look up to as great figures of my I church come, yeah. were all Africans. Yes, they were. They were born in Africa. Yes. Saint Anthony, yeah, Saint Augustine, right? Like the, these were the people that were born in Africa, and they are the inspiration behind the Christ Saint Basil, the, the, these were the, 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 they were behind the, the development of monasticism yeah, yeah. that led to the conversion of Europe. So European Christian spirituality was born in North Africa. So you're saying some of them had learned of some black seed? Well, I'm not, sh I'm not going to say they were, not sure if they were black. I'm not because th there was a lot of Hellenization centuries before Christianity. But the point is, what I'm saying is, European Christian spirituality was born in North Africa. Western European theology looks to Augustine of Hippo. Hippo was in North Africa. 
Uh, and so the founding fathers of European spirituality were Africans, right? Yeah, many Arabs hadn't come into North Africa. But well, that's not until the seventh century, right? Within Christianity, you have uh, black saints that I venerate and I celebrate as champions of my faith, right? I'm just making it clear. I'm not even. I'm not. I'm not even a Christian. Yeah. I'm just making it clear. I'm not saying I don't. Are you a liberal or what? what uh, deist or? I'm, neither. I'm just not really. I'm more secular and stuff like that. But yeah. I do believe in uh, God and like me. I'm West Indian. Yeah. So the Bible is something that has been a big yeah. um, part of West Indian people's lives and stuff like that. Yeah. You know. But um, I just wanted to have the discussion about yeah. you know because I've seen you expose a lot of things about the black people in the religion and uh, it just seemed like I didn't understand how people were saying that there was equality. Yeah. Because if two blacks had been sold to redeem an Arab, I'm confused how that is equal. Yeah, they're He's not telling you that one Arab is worth that for two blacks. Yeah. You know, so like, or, or the fact that that Muhammad um, had black slaves. He had a black slave that he used to call the boat. Right. Like so. So like the the reality is wherever there's slavery, there can't be equality. Yeah, there isn't equality. Right. I, Even the, the Muslims celebrate the fact that the first. Muslim that gave the Adan, Bilal ibn right, Rabat, yes. right, was a black guy. But the point I is, that as well. but the point is, he was still a slave of Muhammad at the time. He was just doing his master's bidding because his master yeah, didn't want to give the Adan yeah. himself. Yeah. So he sent his slave to do it. That's it, pushing it but I, I also debate that as well. You see, what people are focusing on, they're focusing on his color. Yeah. Now, I know that in many Abrahamic religions, you are who your father is. Yeah. I've done deeper research and it says that his father was an Arab slave. Interesting. So by that definition, he's an Arab. That's interesting. So, you know, what is that's a tech is a technique used yeah. to get black people in. And this is the dishonesty of the Dawagandists. They literally It's called Takia, yes. So what they do is they'll they'll conceal aspects of their religion and they'll present aspects of their religion based upon what makes it most acceptable to you. Um, sorry, Jay, I'm just having a discussion with Bob. So um, you'll see me here though, I'm with Bob. I'm with Bob. Alright, take care, bye bye. Yeah. So, yeah. so, but the point is, in, in, in terms of the Christian faith, there's no bar on leadership based upon colour. Based upon colour or race. No, exactly. So wherever the church planted itself, the indigenous people always become the leaders of the church. If you go to Ethiopia, there aren't white people running the church, it's black people. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, know, I know about the Ethiopian yeah. Orthodox. I used to go to an Orthodox church. Go to Japan, it's Japanese people. Go to India, it's Indian people. Go to, um, you know, Persia, it's Persian people. Right? Um, and so, so, but I, I want to ask you, what's your name, bro? Um, call me Ben. 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 Right, but, but I want to ask you a question, Ben. Like, who, because you're saying that you, you believe in God, but you, you don't necessarily practice any particular religion. Is that fair? I'm not religious. All right. So, so my question to you is, who is Jesus to you? Oh, I'll, I'll keep that, I'll keep that. But Jesus is a special person. Right. He's a, yeah, I'll, but I won't get into that, but Jesus is an is a extremely special person. Yeah. But I, I, I won't get in, into that. But all right. You are, Jesus is... All right. Uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll discuss that another like time. He's above any man, so we put it like that. Do you, do you believe that Jesus is uncreated? It's a bit of a tricky one. All right. I, I need to learn some. It's a bit of a tricky one. Okay. So, because what, what I would say is... That to, yeah, Jesus is above any man. That's it, that absolutely, he is above every man. But but we to understand who Jesus is of the Bible, we have to understand that Jesus himself declares himself to be God. Oh yeah, I've been studying the stuff you've been saying. I've been studying. Yeah, right. So if we if we accept Jesus for who he claims to be, then that means we've got to accept Jesus as God himself, no, the I, divine. I get that, I get you know. Yeah, I'll just do more research. And All right. Come back. Um, you know, the interesting thing is, is that also, I just want to know your take on it, because some people are saying there's some stories that you find in these religious books, like the story of the seven sleepers. Yeah. Um, there's some other things which some people are saying is Iranian culture. Yeah. And then also the Bible, but then it's like compiled. It's all like compiled into one book. Yeah. And then they say that this is a direct doctrine. Yeah. But from my understanding is that 
when this man went into the cave yeah. and he was told to read, supposedly he couldn't read. Yeah. And then it was like Ikra, Ikra. Yeah. But it seemed like he was assaulted yeah. when he went into the cave. Yeah. So I'm not so sure about that. What's your take on that? Well, my, my take on it, that, yeah, he was so, so, I mean, you, you could translate it as recite, recite, not necessarily read, read. Um, and that makes more sense in a society where people learn orally rather yes, than in the written form. So, so I think it probably mean it, it was probably told to recite, right? I might be wrong. I'm not a linguist. I don't know the Arabic language. Yeah, I looked it up, I think it but was. yeah, it could it could well be. Recite, right? Similar. But 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 the point the point is, when you look at the experience that Muhammad had, when you look at the experience that Muhammad had, shall we take a couple of steps this way? Yeah, I, I, there's always there's always a crowd that gathers around me, and and then and then they get. I love your work. And watch you a lot. Peace be with you, bro. God Lord. bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank here, you, sir. here, have a card, bro. If you want to keep oh, in touch. Yes, of course. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. So, so in terms of in terms of what happened in the cave, Muhammad is is physically assaulted by an angelic being. By an angel. It sounded yeah. like an assault. Right. Well, if an angel physically assaults you, then it is assault. Christians call it possession. It's demonic. Right, because if you look at if you look at the the scriptures and you look at what demon possession looks like in scripture, it comes with physical assault. You know, yeah, yeah, the yeah, demons yeah. drive. The Muslims say that as well. Right, exactly. So if Muhammad's being physically assaulted when the angel comes to him, you know, he's choking and throttling him. Yeah, it's, then yeah. that's not angelic. Yeah, that's like a common assault. Yeah, like why does God need to assault his prophets? <laughs> like. When, he, when the angels come to the other prophets, they, they yeah, greet they them and they say, you know, peace. And they, and, you know, they, 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 they tell them, don't be afraid. What they don't do is start choking, choking them, them and, you know. Shoving them out. Yeah, so what you've got, what you've got with, with happening in the cave is a demonic possession. I don't deny Muhammad had an encounter with angels. What I deny, what type are you saying? I, I am saying exactly, it's a demonic angel, it's not a... Um, you know, I read a part in the hadith where it's saying that he wrote a letter. Yeah. So I'm questioning now, when they're saying he couldn't read or write, I'm saying, is that so? Because it's saying he wrote a letter. Yeah. And if you write a letter, you must know how to read and write. Exactly. So I'm, I'm kind of well, well, one one of the things is that Islamic sources have contradictions inside of them. Yes, that's why the Shia and the Sunni there. Well, that that's one of the reasons why the Shia, the Shia and the Sunni use different sources. Yes. But but even within Sunni sources, there are contradictions. Yeah, there's about four main sects in Sunni. Yes. Yeah. But but the, the 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 Sunni sources themselves contradict one another. And 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 you know Muslims when they see something that looks like a contradiction in the gospel they'll they'll use that as a reason not to trust it but when they have contradictions in their own hadiths they they don't so, so you're saying then it's a bit of hypocrisy though. there's a double standard yeah double Muslims standard. use a double standard all the time every every all the t in this corner they'll use double standards well, well I've seen many of them throw the hadiths under the mask yeah they do I, I've seen that. when they can't defend it they'll that usually what happens is first they deny it. Yeah, they say it doesn't exist, yes. it's not there. Then you show them the proof, then suddenly they become an expert in it. Or suddenly they don't understand what you're saying. Yeah, or that as well. So they either become an expert or they become obtuse. Or if they become an expert and their expertise suddenly collapses, they took it away. Like, it's, it's, all it is is it's just, um, it's just a culture that wants to win every argument. Okay, so it's not based upon facts. You're it's saying. not based upon consistency. Okay, lack of consistency. Right, and and that should tell us all something. Yeah, yeah. I remember you were debating a guy. I don't know if you know, maybe he was like Arab or North African or something. And um, you were showing a bit about the slavery. You say, no, 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 it's not there. It doesn't exist. And you're like, it says it right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I had to watch that video like twice because it's like. Wait, you've shown him where it is. Yeah. You've shown him like, look, sunnah.com. Yeah. And he's saying that, no, it doesn't say that. You're like, but it says it right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And I read it, re you know, word for word, and it said exactly what you said it said. Exactly. You know, so... And, and that should tell us something, that the attitude that a lot of the Dawagandists come at this is that they'll, they want to make a convert at any cost. 
Okay, they so want to win the argument at any cost. So you're saying even if it means lying? Even if it means lying. But unfortunately, a lot of people get duped by that because in Western culture, we have the presumption of honesty. We have the presumption of integrity, right? But the Muslims don't start from a position of integrity uh, and a position of honesty, especially the Dawagandists. They come from an honor culture, and honor culture means... Yeah, honor culture means I can't lose face. And so because I can't lose face, that's more important than telling the truth. But, but isn't it, you see, what's confusing me is because in, um, in the religion of Islam, aren't you meant to tell the truth? Like I said, like I said, contradictory sources. So, so, so in Islam, you can lie to your wife about taking a second wife. Oh yeah? Yeah. So in other words, you can sleep Sounds with like a, a good, good idea. I, that's a terrible idea. It's a terrible I'm idea. I'm trolling, I'm trolling. I know, I know. But like, but, but but the point is, if you can lie to someone you're sharing a bed with, how, how else? Who else can you lie to? What else can you lie about? If you can actually lie about something as profound as having sex with another woman, right, and not telling a, your wife. What else can you lie about? What wow. kind of mindset does that create? Wow. That you can live in a world of secrets. Yeah, that's, you, that's, uh, and so Islam leads to a kind of moral corruption. Well, you know, because I'm, I'm studying places in the Middle East. Yeah. And one of the places I had been focused on was Turkey. Because I had worked with some Turks in the gym and stuff like that. Because yeah. um, I do personal training. And the Turks, many of them have given up this religion. Yeah, yeah, they are. They've given up the religion. Yeah. Some that I spoke to, they said it's not morally just. Yeah. And it's not morally right or yeah. correct. Yeah. I won't go into the age of marriage because that's yeah. that's going to rattle some feathers. We won't get. I don't mind that. rattling feathers. Yeah, I know, I know. But um, you know, like they're saying, like their girls are being. Um, sexually harassed by you know certain migrants and stuff like that and so yeah. the migrants don't see anything wrong with it because they used to marry nine-year-olds yeah you know i had a guy debating me at 3 a.m in the morning on why it's okay to marry yeah nine to 13 year olds we've had we've had people in this park on multiple occasions defending child marriage yes i've seen and it. sex seen with children and this is the problem with liberal culture because liberal culture will say, we're against child marriage, we're against paedophilia. Mm. But then you'll say to them, okay, you're against it, so are you against a religion that licenses it, that licenses it and promotes it, mm. uh, but they won't condemn it? You know why though? Uh, they've got cognitive dissonance yes, that and is, white guilt. Yeah, exactly, so it's not, a, yeah, that's it. So part of it is, is that if they're white and they mention that, they'll be accused of being racist. Yeah. I didn't know that being a Muslim was a specific race. Yeah, it wasn't and um, isn't. You know, so I, I thought black people could also be Muslims. They were. White people are Muslims. Yeah. Like in Albania. It, so it's like they'll be classified as racist and also Islamophobe. Yeah. But I think that um, any religion should we should be able to examine it yeah whether it's islam whether it's christianity whether it is um buddhism yeah sikhism etc yeah because you know, even the other day i post up something where in bangladesh you have the sikh sikh um, not sikh sorry hindu child marriage yeah you know but if i was to post it up about another specific group which, yeah you know what maybe i might be claiming to be islamophobic well, 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 this is the point. I want to sound the alarm for anyone who is listening. On the 1st of April, there is going to come into effect a law in Scotland that, uh, that criminalizes hatred, in quote marks. But the definition of hatred, in quote marks, is totally subjective. It's based entirely upon how the hearer hears it. Yeah. Right? On the 1st of April, free speech in the United Kingdom is going to die, right? And when Labour win, which unfortunately looks like they will, so please don't vote Labour, Labour is committed to passing a law against Islamophobia. But how it defines Islamophobia is any criticism of Muslimness. 
Now, what the hell does that term mean? Yeah, what does that mean? That's yeah. an elastic term that can include absolutely anything. Anything, yeah. So if you oppose slavery, and you oppose so Islamic get... slavery, you could be arrested for being Islamophobic because you criticize the Islamic slave trade. If you oppose child marriage, you could be arrested. That's strange. This is the law that Labour is committed to bringing in. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't sound the alarm loud enough that we are literally this year in the United Kingdom going to lose freedom of speech. It's going to happen on all of our watches. There needs to be a nationwide pushback. You, we need to make the arguments for free speech again and we need to make free speech one of the topics of the next general election and we need to uh, unelect any MP, whether they're SNP or Labour or Conservative, that supports the idea of crushing free speech. Because uh, Here's why. Because if we don't do that, then what happens when people like me get into power? Your enemy say, and I start using the law against you. What happens when your ideological opponent becomes the government and they start using those laws to suppress you? Freedom for one is freedom for all. If we don't have freedom, none of us have freedom. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, and it's, it's really interesting because, um, like, when you... So, you know, like, the thing you're saying about freedom of speech, yeah. freedom of... You know, we can go like freedom of belief or religion. Or yeah. Is. When you look at some of the people here, so I'm saying some. Yeah. Who will like this because it may go in their favour. But it's interesting because when you go to some of those countries, you have no freedom. For example, Iran. Yeah. In Iran, people do not have freedom to make a choice of their own belief. Yeah. If they want to become Christian, if they want to become Zaustaran, which is their original belief, yep. or any other belief, they're getting put in prison and even murdered. Yeah. You know, something as simple as not wearing a head covering yep. to the exact standard that they like, someone is murdered. Yeah. The, um, I can't remember the name of the woman. Yeah. I followed Iranians and they are totally against this kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of them has come to the UK yeah. so they can have freedom of choice. And now it's getting taken away from now them it's again. Removed. But like for example, the the, the, the the Her Majesty's government is not accepting the fact that Muslim gangs are doing forcible conversions inside of our prison system. There's a saying inside the prison system, right? Don't con if if you don't convert, you get hurt. Right? They, they jump right? They and and they, they, they give you a beatdown if you won't convert to Islam. <laughs> Right, that's forced conversion happening yeah, forced inside conversion. the UK and the British government, because of liberalism, refuses to see it, refuses to accept it and refuses to do anything about it. it this is a, a problem yeah. that because of the liberalism of our government is not being tackled in our prisons and it will not be tackled again until we make it an issue at the election. Yeah, because you see, I was thinking it's like if you flip it on its head and say like, you know, you're a Christian and people wanted someone to become a Christian and they are attacking them, they are beating them up. Say you had a regime here where anyone who speaks out against Christianity yeah. could be put in prison, yeah. could be beaten, yeah. could be even murdered. Yeah. This would be big news. Well, that's the point. So, who saw that YouTube video of that white guy being harassed because he was eating during Ramadan? It's, it's floating around Twitter yeah, next. Put your hand up if you've seen it. Was so, he in a, um, some it, kind of room? Yeah, he was fish. sitting in a cafeteria and eating, right? Imagine if the roles were reversed. Imagine if a group of white guys had started mocking the Muslim because he wasn't, because he wasn't eating. Who's getting sacked? What? Yeah. So, so like, anyway, so so if these roles were reversed, it would be on every front page. It would be a top of the news agenda, and there would be lectures and conversations about Islamophobia, right? But when it has happened to a white guy who's eating during Ramadan, and I have to call him white because I can't well, identify his religion, and he is white. 
white. But, it, I, I, but it con this is where the confusion about racial and religious dynamics occurs, because I'm literally now contrasting a religion to a race, and that's yeah. what you've all got to bear no, in mind. Not, yeah. But his culture is obviously not Islamic. Yeah, he's not Muslim. There's no outcry, there's no outrage. The person that did it is not being sacked. And I want to say to that white guy, you're a fucking coward. You should have sat there and you should have said, look, I'm not trying to offend you, but I'm allowed to eat. I'm not a Muslim. You should have stood up for yourself, you wimp. You absolute chicken shit, right? I defy these Dawagandis bullies every single Sunday. If I can do it, so can you, right? But the point is, where's your outrage? Why aren't you all outraged about what happened to this guy? Why aren't all of you up in arms and angry about what happened to this guy? Because if they can do it to him, they can do it to you. And it might have been doing as a bit of a, a joke. Like a microaggression. A microaggression in, thank you, a microaggression in that workplace but if you turn a blind eye to it in 10 years time, that microaggression is going to be real aggression. Real aggression. Just, just Paddington Station. Just last night, a Ukrainian guy was beaten to the point of hospitalization by a gang of 20 Muslims because he was seen drinking in Ramadan. Did you hear about it? No, you didn't. The point is the liberal media shepherd our vision away from the things that contradict the narrative that they want to give you. You've got to set your mind free of the liberal media. Go on. What I'm wondering, so you're saying that the man had been beaten because he was drinking alcohol in Ramadan. Yeah, in a Muslim area. But this country, it's not a Muslim country. It's exactly. So, right, so let me deal. Trying to force the religion or the right, so let the me. Law on him, let, let, the, that's a great. It's a great, great I point. So, so this is where a, a lot of our a lot of our discourse is confused. So, firstly, on paper, this country is a Christian country. We have a constitutional monarchy, and the monarch is head of state, and he's also the head of the Church of England. So, on paper, at least, we're supposed to be a Christian country. Yeah. But in every other way, the reality is we are, as you said, a secular society. But here's the shocker for all secularists, right? Secularism cannot, does not, and will not stop Islamization. Secularism didn't stop Islamization in Nigeria. When Nigeria became independent in 1953, it was, it was meant to be a secular state. And the Christians of Nigeria put all their chips on secularism as a way of preventing Islamization. It failed. France is supposed to be a secular state, but France is failing to stop Islamization in France. The UK is, is, is acting like a secular state, and yet Islamization continues. America is a secular state, but if you go to Dearborn, Michigan, you're seeing Islamization can, can carry out. So the reality is all of us need to wake up to the fact that secularization cannot, will not, and does not stop Islamization. So we need an alternative. And I want to say that that alternative is a muscular, confident, triumphant, militant church. A confident, muscular, militant, triumphant Christianity. Because we can be free of the incumbencies and the short-sightedness of liberal ideology. We can do what the liberals can't do. We can go into the prisons and say, yeah, you are forcibly converting people. And we can separate the prisoners out and we can crack the skulls of the gang bullies that are running the prison system. Because as Christians, we aren't encumbered by liberal concepts of self, individualism, uh, and human rights. 
but the liberals are and that's why liberal is liberal secularism is clearing the way for islamization so what was quite interesting then is like your kind of suggestion is to do it without using violence if if you can that's basically what you're yeah. kind of saying yeah i mean I'm, i i want to be clear i'm not advocating anything illegal yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i'm saying what we should do is we should use the fullness of the law yeah. to resist Islamization. Let me give you an example. It's not illegal to boycott. So why don't you boycott halal foods? Put your hands up if you have bought food in a halal restaurant or halal. Right, right. I've stopped doing it. So should all of you. Oh, right. So I've, I've just realized something. Are you saying then that... Use the fullness of the law to resist Islamization. I think I understand what you're saying, because I'm thinking of something else. But are you saying that some of the money, which is the proceeds of the food, could be going to sponsor, like, you know, Islamization. trade and other things that is going on in those regions of the world? Z any Muslim business, any Muslim business owner worth his salt, right, worth his prayer mat, he's going to take a percentage of his earnings and give it in zakat. Zakat, yes. Sir. Right. Zakat is a compulsory tax. It's a redistributive, a redistributive tax that can only go to Muslims. Doesn't go to Christians in need. Uh, not Jews. Not Jews in need. Oh, okay. Not atheists in need. Only Muslims can receive zakat. Right? But that zakat can be given towards dawah, which is Islamization, it's towards making converts. So if you're a Christian and you're supporting a Muslim business, you're contributing to zakat. And that zakat is working against the church. So you should stop doing it, right? That's working within the law. You can use the law to stop building mosques. You can use the law to change the law so that you can do more within the law to prevent Islamization. And that is what a muscular Christianity would do, can do and should do. But a liberal secularist will never do that because it contradicts the tenets of liberal secularism. You see, I was thinking also because like when we say about um, helping Muslims and you know, I have many Muslim friends and stuff like that, but I'm not seeing where the help has been pushed towards the black slaves in Mauritania, yeah. Libya, yeah. Um, you know, Sudan, yeah. you know, all of these regions. So it seems like it's going more towards a kind of more Middle Eastern yeah. route. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of escaping the blacks. And it always seems like, I, I've noticed even you made a point about the hadiths one time. Yeah. Anytime it's something concerning a black person, they have to mention it. Yeah. That he's black. And what is, what's the need of that? Yeah. So even when you look even within the religion, it's not helping all Muslims. Yeah. It's helping mainly those of the Middle well, East. Well, the thing is, Islam has no reason to work against its own slave trade. Because it's Islamic. The only people that are going into the Islamic world and setting black slaves free Christians. are Christian missionaries. Yes, I've seen that. Yes. Christian missionaries are the only people doing it. Black yes, Christian missionaries, white Christian missionaries, uh, Korean Christian missionaries. They're going into the Muslim slave markets and they're buying black slaves, Muslim black slaves and Christian black slaves and animist black slaves and they're setting them free. They don't just set them free, they try to teach them a trade. Yeah. They try to give them a job. You so know? You're saying that it's actually a lot better than what they were in before, but you know, I had seen some people trying to justify it and say, oh, well, the slavery isn't like that of the slavery you think it is. It's yeah. not of the white slavery, it's not of this slavery. But yeah. It's like, come on, you're raping the woman. I've seen people being led in chains. Yeah. What type of slavery are we, you know, it's, it's I mean, the, 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 anyone who's trying to, no one should receive our patience or tolerance who's trying to defend the slave trade. Yeah. Right? And unfortunately, we've got lots of Muslims in this corner on camera defending the yes, slave I've trade. They've been justifying it. Yeah. I've seen it. Right? Our society is better off without these people. I, 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 I am an advocate that we should change the law through legal means so that anyone who is advocating for the slave trade yes. should lose or, or, or therefore sharia law 
should lose their access to state institutions. If they're an immigrant here, they should lose their citizenship. Yeah, and they should be removed from the country. Our country will be better off if we don't tolerate people who justify the slave trade, yes, who justify them. child marriage, yes, who just justify them. religious prejudice, who justify apostasy laws, who justify, um, you know, uh, the, the, the kind of bigotry uh, that we're seeing within the Islamic world. We can do better as a society if we're actually less liberal, less tolerant, Okay, and, so and tackle these people. So what we need to do with it. With an iron fist. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right. If you look at if you look at societies that have suppressed successfully Islamist movements, and Britain is not an example of that, we are a net exporter of Islamic terrorism. We're a net exporter. Muslim countries like Syria and Iraq have suffered because of the terrorism that we've exported. Nigeria has suffered because of the terrorism that the UK has exported. Somalia has suffered because of the terrorism that we have exported. Wait, but you look at societies that have successfully suppressed Islamists and they do it by an iron fist. And, and they seem to be coming up in the world. Um, for some Iranians that I followed again, there's a guy, um, Yunus, Yunus Rocks. Yeah. I don't know if you know of him. He's saying that, um, I can't remember, 30, about 40 years ago or so, yeah. Iran was one of the top five countries in the world or like very visited. Yeah. Right now they're about 115 in the world. Yeah. So it's just sunk right down. You look at you. Even Afghanistan was, was, was up there at some point. You look at Iran before the Islamic Revolution, right? Iran was a beautiful country. Yeah, lovely, amazing. The, 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 the people of Iran were a beautiful people and they still are. Yes. But they still are because they've rejected the Islamic revolution. Yeah? Right? It's all right. They just need to shout at Deus Volt, right? Right? But the point is, they don't, they don't do that to me anymore because I just take the piss out of them, right? But the point is, you look at Afghanistan before the communist invasion, and you compare the position of women then to the position of women now, it's, it's a complete contrast. It's terrible. The reality is that Islam leads to the suppression of rights, of minorities, of women, wherever it dominates. And, and Christianity is a, a better system precisely because its system of law is better. Its understanding of law is better. Its understanding of lawfare is better. It starts off with a single premise that we all have equal dignity because we're all made in the image of God. And you have that regardless of your religion or race. So before you're a Christian, you have the image of God. Before you are black or white, you have the image of God. And on that basis, we build an equality in law and seek an equality in law. During the Crusader states, for example, 30% of the, 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 the population of the Crusader states were Muslims, right? 30%. There were no problems, <laughs> even though 30% were Muslim, there were no problems. But Muslim travelers commentated that Muslims inside the Crusader states were better trapped by their Christian lords than the Muslims were trapped by, the, uh, by their Muslim caliphs. So, so you're saying that Muslims were treated better in the Christian Crusader states by their own yes, Muslims? Yes, by their own. And that's not my commentary, that's the commentary of Muslim travelers. There's a particular so Mus you're saying Muslims themselves. Muslim, a Muslim traveler who went on Hajj and passed through the Crusader states, please note he passed through the Crusader states on his way to Hajj commented on this himself. I forget his name, but but there is, uh, but but yeah, he, I can find his name you, if you need you it. You know what, I would like to take your contact after and um, if you could share this information. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I'm going to leave the floor to someone else. Okay. Uh, for a discussion. It was really it was, lovely talking to you. It was a really good discussion. Get in touch with me. 100%. Right, I, I always give a gift to people. I know, I've seen the videos, you always give I a always gift. give the gift. I've seen the videos. I'm guessing you've got a Bible. Yes, I've got a Bible. Right, well, this is not a Bible then. This is a book. Okay. And it, it's a book about 
you know, how uh, it's a basically a living uh, a saint and the life of a saint. Yeah, actually, let me give you a different book. Let me give you a different book. Sorry, I'll swap you. Have that one. I'll take I was that one. Very interested in this book. All right, you have that one then. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. All right. Yeah. Nice, nice to meet. All right. You. God care. bless. Take care.